Hey everybody, I'm Brian with Fort Knox Company and I'm going to show you how to change out the filters in your reverse osmosis system. So this right here is a reverse osmosis system from Apex Water Systems. I got this off Amazon. I've installed many of these and they are great. I have zero complaints. They usually run about 180 to 200 bucks. And I'm gonna show you how to change out these filters and also explain some of the stuff up here. These bottom three filters, which is a particle filter and two carbon filters need to be changed out about every six to 12 months. This top filter up here, cleans out the chlorine, odors, smells, and some other contaminants in the water every two to four years and as well as this one every two to four years. Because we have really hard water here in Las Vegas, I'm gonna change out these filters every year and these two filters every two years. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to change out these three filters, which are your most common ones that need to be changed out more regularly. It's very easy. You only need a couple wrenches and tools. If for some reason you lost the ones that came with the system or you just need to buy some new ones, I'll put links for these as well as the filters and anything else that I'm using in this video. All those links will be in the description below for parts that you might need. So the first step is to turn off the water flow to the system, which is gonna be the cold water here that comes off of your main water line. You are going to turn that off. This one has a screw down valve. And then you're also gonna turn off the water here in your air tank. This holds the water as a reserve and also has pressurized air inside to create a, a large amount of water that's already filtered to be able to go into the system when you need it. You're just gonna turn this valve, it's just a quarter turn, shut that off. Next thing we're going to do is turn on the faucet. Let this water come out of here. See, we have no pressure now. This is going to relieve some of the water and pressure that's in that system before we start opening up these canisters right here. These are the filters that I got from APEC. I also ordered these right off of Amazon. Again, the links will be in the description, but these were about 30 something dollars. I got one of these, um, the chlorine odor filters as well. I thought I might need to change this out, but again, I said it's every two to four years. So we're gonna save this for next year, but this is our one year filter change. It has the particle filter stage one and stage two and three are these carbon filters. These are the same filters for two and three. So don't worry about that. It's just the order of large particles, carbon filters. It also comes with some instructions right here, explains the process of how to do it everything that I'm showing you as well, but I'll actually walk you through the steps that I'm doing. So now that we have the water pressure relieved, we have this open here. The water is shut off at the cold water supply. The water is shut off on the tank. We can then go ahead and start removing these canisters with this large wrench right here. When I install these systems, I like to leave a little bit of slack in these lines that it's attached with so that I can move stuff around later on. It does kind of suck to have to work deep inside a cabinet when trying to remove these. So I usually give myself enough room here to work. I also bring some towels because there may still be some water in here. These things have a tight seal and they are usually filled up with no air and full of water. So when we open these, we can expect a little bit of water coming out. So have some towels nearby. You're going to use this wrench. You're going to come around. And you're going to do it a counterclockwise. It is righty tighty lefty loosey on these. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I didn't have the cold water shut off all the way. And as you saw, it just started spraying everywhere. So two and a half towels later, we have the water turned off. We have everything cleaned up. And I'm gonna show you how it's supposed to look like. All right, so bear with me, but it happens to the best of us. Okay, so now we got everything cleaned up. The water wasn't shut off all the way, but we did get this loose. You can see this is how it comes off. Just screws off here like this. You can lift it up. So there is water in here. So I have another towel that's available to kind of dry up some of this. You can also place a towel underneath. If you guys want to see what the inside of this thing looks like, that's why we got to change these things out. We have really hard water here in Las Vegas. So we will dump this out here into the sink. 
We will rinse this out. You want to rinse these out, make sure there's nothing in there, there's no residue or any debris that may be in there. This first filter, which is the first stage, catches all the large particles, and then the next two are the carbon filters. So we're gonna do this to the other two. We will drop this one in. Then we're gonna drop this thing in. You can see in the bottom, there's a little ring right there that actually coincides with the hole there. So as you put this down, you'll feel it kind of sit. So that keeps it centered. When you're putting these on, again, they need to be centered with these. And they're, they're not too tight, but they do need to be aligned up. If it's off, the hole that filters the water through and out is going to be a little bit um, pressing on the filter. And you might not be able to screw it down all the way. So make sure that these are seated over those little rings. And then when we go to put this back in, again, just tighten it down. We're not going to over tighten it, but we're going to make it very snug. So inside here... You can see that we have this hole right here. That's gonna line up with the hole here. I'm gonna do this vertically so that we can see it. I'll do this right side up so that this thing doesn't wobble inside here. You can feel it kind of sit down on it and you should be able to tighten down almost all the way knowing that it's not gonna be so we're already pretty close. And now with the wrench, I can squeeze this down a little bit more and create the watertight seal. Now we have this one done. We're gonna do the exact same thing to the other two and it should be just as smooth. What I'm gonna do this time is actually put the towel underneath just to try to catch some of that initial water that comes out. We can see here the carbon filter inside this one. That makes it a little bit easier now, so it's not going to drip on us. Same thing here. It has that ring in the bottom that coincides with the rings here. These go in both ways. They're reversible. So make sure the new one sits inside like that. Rinse this out. Make sure there's no debris in it. Then we'll start putting in our new carbon filters. Feel it kind of sit down on that. We'll do the exact same thing on here. You feel it kind of sit. Tighten it the rest of the way down with the wrench. One more to go, we'll be done. Now that we have all the filters changed out, everything's tightened up, we're going to leave this closed. We're gonna turn on the cold water, leave your spigot on, so it allows the air pressure to go through the system without affecting the air bladder or the pressure in here. And you're just gonna allow water to flow through the system, push out all the air inside these tanks, out the faucet, and start letting it run. And we're gonna let that run, and I say 10 to 15 minutes, you'll see it'll start to kind of bring out some black water. That is everything going through and flushing out all the particles that are loose in the carbon filters, and that will make sure you don't get that in your drinking water. So let it run for about 15 minutes just to be safe. Then we can turn it all off and turn the tank back on and we'll be up and running. So we're gonna turn the water back on. 
Once we have the water on there running, it's gonna push all the air through the system. We're gonna leave this open so it allows that air and water to come out. Once it does fill up, we're gonna allow that water to run for about 15 minutes to flush out anything that's loose inside the new filters. And then after about 15 minutes, we can turn the water off at the spigot and then we can turn this tank back on and we will be ready to use it. And while this thing is running, this is a really good time to check everything for leaks. Obviously, we want to make sure that there's no leaks coming from these seals. If there are, we're just going to tighten them down with the wrench. You could see when I took them off, it didn't take a lot to loosen them. So they were not on there super tight. You do not want to over tighten these. It's just, I would say like very snug, but you don't need to crank them down as hard as you can. There is a big O-ring inside there that you can also get replaced if you need to. And that sometimes um, will go out over the years, but this is only one year old system. So I didn't need to replace those, but they are large O-rings. And so they have a lot of cushion to them. So as you squeeze it down, it applies enough pressure and creates a good seal for you. Now that we've let this thing run for about 15 minutes, there's not a lot of water pressure in there because it's kind of slowly pushing through the filters. We can turn this off here. We can go ahead and turn our air tank back on. Now we have a full pressurized system and we can actually use this as we would like. You can see a little bit of air there. Now the system is ready to use, up and running, brand new filters. And there you have it guys, that's how easy it is to change out the filters on your reverse osmosis system. As you can see in the video, I did have a couple little hiccups. I forgot to have the cold water turned off all the way and it started spraying all over the phone and the floor. So I had to go get a couple towels and then soak up all the water and start filming again. I also was trying to change out the cartridges and show you on camera and I was rushing and it fell over while I'm filming. If I can do that, maybe took about 20 to 30 minutes for the whole entire thing, you guys can do it too. Believe it or not, I know what I'm doing and even I can make some mistakes and it's fine. I do also want to mention to you guys that I do make custom shirts. If you see this shirt here, I got the Fort Knox logo that I designed in kind of like a Milwaukee style. Everything has the American flag on the sleeve and I also make some other designs like this Grim Reaper here. These are the newest designs. It took me a while. I worked on drawing this for a long time, but I drew this up and then I have it shrinked for the chest piece. So you see the chest piece just has a little insignia right here but has the flag, same type of font that I use that I kind of tweaked and did some stuff by hand. But this one says, always reaping for Knox Company. And this one says, get busy living. So just some cool, like just motivational stuff, positive, kind of edgy, just fun. I got these ones in a lot of different colors. Very, very limited supply on the orange or I have a subdued orange. We have uh, neon blue, hot pink, which I did for my daughter. Um, but we have some cool designs, neon blue, but I also have some of the other ones, which are my traditional ones that I started off with. Got my Fort Knox logo. We have the flag with the Fort Knox company, but we have these real clean looking. A lot of them will have some type of like little stamp on the back, but I can do them whatever. I do them one off and I do them all by hand. So if you need something specific or maybe you just want something with the flag, I can do that for you. Really good fitted material, very breathable. It's a blend, it's a cotton poly blend. So if you guys want to grab one of these shirts, I just do it for fun on the side. It's just something that I like to do. Um, I have a creative itch if you haven't learned that already, but um, I just like designing. I have these things in my head, so I do it. If you ever wanted to build, you ever want to do some screen printing, or maybe you guys have some questions about how to do screen printing or different methods of it, I can tell you I have boxes of all the equipment, got lots of shirts available, and I can print them all on demand in whatever color combination you want. I'll be showing you guys how to change out those top filters probably in the next year when I need to actually do it. Um, unless you guys want me to do it, I'll just actually make a video on showing you that process. There is a couple tricky steps to it and um, it's not too hard, but it's just some, it's a little bit different than just taking it out and putting it in, but it is pretty easy. Um, but if you guys want, I'll make a video. Let me know in the comments if you do want me to make a video about those other two parts, and then I'll just go ahead and make that video for you and change them out now. But otherwise, if you guys haven't already subscribed to my channel, please consider doing that. As you can see, I have a soft water system. I have a few different videos on showing how to install these systems, how to remove them. I have a lot of other DIY videos of how to fix things around the house and even build yourself a house, framing, drywall, electrical, plumbing. So if you have any interest in that, consider subscribing. Thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. If you can, give the video a thumbs up for me. YouTube loves that in the algorithm. And um, I'll see you guys on the next build.